And welcome once again, Cobb Bethel AME Church and friends to this week's Bible study lesson. Amen. Coming from Romans, the 13th chapter and the first verse. Romans, the 13th chapter and the first verse. Welcome, welcome, welcome once again. Another hump day. Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. I believe around the 13th day, as is, of January 2021. Welcome. Welcome, turn to Romans, the 13th chapter, amen, Romans, the 13th chapter, praise the Lord, lots has happened since the last time we talked, mm, a lot has happened since the last time we talked, Romans, the 13th chapter, amen, Father, we come before your throne of grace to thank you once again, Heavenly Father, for this moment you've allowed us to enjoy, most of all, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, Made it all possible for us now. We pray, oh God, that thou continue to hold us in the hollow of your almighty hand. Continue to bless us with thy word. Continue, oh God, to open our eyes to the truth. Continue, oh God, to manifest yourself through your word to us. That we will better be able to go out to the hedges and the highways. And unto anyone we come in contact with, spreading the liberating good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, the 13th chapter of Romans. Amen. 13th chapter of Romans. Now, this is where we find out how children of God are supposed to behave uh, towards our government and people who are in charge. Because actually, it is ordained by God to have some form of government. Now, it is not ordained by God, of course, to have corruptible forms of government. Uh, we have uh, forms of government that are good and then people corrupt within the government that does not do what they are supposed to do. However, the government as a whole, the government itself is placed. The idea, the function of government is for the good of the people. And that's what's ordained by God. Not the dysfunctioning, not the behavior of those who are uh, evil that get into the government. That's not the purpose that God intended. The 13th chapter of Romans, very first verse, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Therefore, God is the power. However, on earth, he has ordained for us to have government, rules and regulations that we should live by for the good of mankind. Now, uh, in that we have those that are ordained by God, they need to be right. As I've stated before, uh, uh, corrupt government is not what God has ordained, but God has ordained government for the good of the people. God is the ultimate source of the power, but there is some power given, amen, for the good of the people to us. Whosoever, in the second verse, therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God. But since God has ordained it, then if you are resisting the powers of those that are in charge, then you are resisting the ordinance of God. We should obey the powers of those who are appointed over us. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God. They that resist shall receive to themselves damnation, which means that if you are a resistor of what God has ordained, then that's where the damnation comes in. That's what's left for you. Never mind what will happen to you uh, on earth by man, but uh, uh, um, you, you're, 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 you're subject then uh, to receive unto yourself damnation by the fact that you're rejecting the ordinance of God. So therefore, if you refuse and you're not going to be governed at all, you're not going to be governed by the rules and regulations, then you're going to go off on your own, then you are resisting the ordinance of God and uh, you for, therefore will receive damnation. Mm. 
My, my, my. Damnation. Think about that. Think about that. Damnation. Think about it. That's what you are going to have if you resist what government is in place that is for the good that is of the people. Not oppressive governments, but governments that are put in by the ordinance of God for the good of the people. In that second verse, whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, because there's no power but of God. And the only power you have is what God gives us. All power is, is, in it, is, is of God, but then he can give power to who he, he deems necessary. And that third verse, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Hmm. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the word sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger, to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. In the third verse, rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. What God has ordained would be a terror for people who are doing evil, who are resisting, who are doing wrong, who are committing crimes, these kinds of things. That is what the ordination of God would uh, 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 be a terror for. Not those of us who, who do right and do good and do what we're supposed to do, but those who do the other things, those who are criminal elements, those who are resisting resisting the power, the ordinance of God, who are going in their own way, doing the opposite of good works, then those are the ones who uh, 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 the rulers will be a terror upon. That's who they're set to uh, be a terror upon, is those who are a menace to society. Ah, menace to society, who uh, ought to be afraid of the powers, and they are, but those who we should not be afraid of the powers that God has ordained or put in place. Not the kind of powers that shoot down black men, unarmed men in the back. Not the kind that, that are in injustice in the halls. Not the kind that do evil. We're talking about the kind that is ordained by God to do good to all mankind. Those aren't the ones that we have to be worried about or concerned about. Only those who do evil have to be concerned about the ordinance of God. That is the governments that are ordained by God. We're not talking about people who, who, who are doing evil in, within government. We're talking about the government that is for the good of the people. Do that which is good and thou shalt have praise of the same, if you that is good, uh, those that are in government will praise you. Those who are in government will thank you. Those who are in government do not bother you, but work for your good. Now, as we know, man gets in the way all the time, and he's in the way now. For government does not always run as God has ordained it to. So we know that. So we're not saying. Uh, to obey something that is an abomination in God's sight, even though he has ordained government, he has not ordained the illegality uh, of acts by uh, government officials, such as having uh, uh, people on the police for who you know or not have the good of the people at heart. Those are the kinds of things that is not that are not ordained by God, and we do not. We do not have to have a reference respect for these kinds of elements within the government. However, government itself, praise the Lord, is for the good of the people. And for the most part, for the most part, here in the United States of America, it would work that way. But there are factions, Lord have mercy, that, that, that ruin it. For those who are right, there are factions of evil that ruin it and then cause uh, many of us uh, not to trust, period, not to trust the government, period, that is appointed over us. And that fourth verse, 
for he is the minister of God to thee for good. That's what it's meant for. Not for corruption, not for evil, not for injustice, not for oppression, which is what we get a lot of times, but is for the good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. So, therefore, if you are one that insists on doing evil, if evil acts are your way of life, then you are uh, 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 the one who stands in the way and the sword should be used for you to govern, amen, to govern acts, to, to, to uh, 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 govern acts of people who are evil doers. The minister of God, a minister. These are people placed in position, the government itself, mm -hmm, government itself, that will execute wrath upon those who do evil. If you're going to do evil, then there is a is a uh, uh, consequence for doing evil, for rejecting those who are appointed over us, for rejecting the ordinance of God. Be afraid, for you are rejecting the ordinance of God. You need to follow the laws that have been established because the government itself is established and ordained by God. The laws then, amen, that are equal, that are right, that are true, that are fair, are ordained by God. They are ordained of God. Hmm. Wherefore, ye must seeds be subject, must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. Wherefore, fifth verse, ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their duties, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Mm. My goodness. And the fifth, sixth, seventh verse. For your conscience, not only for wrath, but for your conscience as well. Mm -hmm. My my, for your conscience as well. Mm. Your uh, uh, is, is subject to the government. Is subject to your behavior, your conscience, not only for wrath, but your conscience needs to be aware of your conscience. Uh, 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 pay tribute where tribute is due. Mmm, mmm, my goodness. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, mm, he must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. Not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For this cause pay ye tribute also. Mm. For they are God's ministers. Have a good conscience. Avoid the wrath. <laughs> yeah, do what you're supposed to do. And good conscience, avoid the wrath. You have uh, uh, to pay ye tribute. For these are God's ministers. To continually... A uh, to for, uh, ministers attending continually upon this very thing, which has to do maybe with taxes and things like that, uh, uh, is supposed to be all for the good of mankind. Pay your share, like anyone else is to pay their share. Have a good conscience. Mm. Pay your share. Don't try to avoid for the good of all mankind, and it's ordained by God. Render therefore. 
to all their dues, whatever is due. Tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom is due, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. So all, the, all of the people who are placed in position, you ought to just do due diligence towards all of them. Due diligence toward them all with the respect and honor that they deserve. And uh, out of our good conscience, out of our good behavior, then we will, man, and we will render due diligence to all who are placed over us to governing for governing purposes. For remember the good of the people, good of the people. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute, custom, fear, honor, uh, all of these, all of these, all of these, all of these, all of these. Owe no man anything but to love one another. That's the only thing. Love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Love is one another. Oh, no man. Um, we ought to give one another what it is that one another deserves. One another to give back to us as what we deserve from one uh, individual to another. We get along peaceably. We don't fuss. We don't fight. We don't argue. We one another to the point where uh, 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 we do any harm to one another. We get along with one another. From the top to the bottom, from those who are in charge to those who are have charge, who you have charge over, love one another. That's what we owe one another is to love one another. We don't owe one another anything else. Love and everything else comes with love. You'll honor who you're supposed to honor. You will have respect for those who you ought to respect. If we will love one another. Hmm. But we fulfill the law in that way. God's law is fulfilled if we love one another. Do diligence to one another. Mm, do what we are supposed to do towards one another. And to respect those who we are, to give custom to those, uh, 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 honor to those who are feared, to those who we need to, then, uh, uh, amen, we're living within God's law and we are in respect of his ordinance. That that he has ordained the way that we are supposed to be, the way that we are supposed to live and act towards one another. Hmm, my goodness. Render therefore to all their dues what they are due. Amen, praise regardless to whom they are. They are doing the right thing. They are governing for the good of mankind. Render unto them. Owe no man anything. There's nothing to owe but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. That's in the eighth verse. That fifth, sixth, and seventh verse. Mm -hmm. Do as you're supposed to do towards those appointed over you. Fifth, sixth, and seventh verse. For conscious sake, not only for wrath, for conscious sake. Pay tribute also. If it's taxes, pay the taxes that is appointed to you for the good of all. For God's ministers, those who are appointed are considered to be the ministers for the good of all mankind. In the ninth verse, for this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. We don't do those kinds of things to ourselves. We don't hate ourselves. We don't come around ourselves. Oh my goodness. We don't steal from ourselves. We don't commit adultery to ourselves. Don't do it to anyone else. My, my, my. We know how we're supposed to act towards those in charge over us. And how do we act towards those who are fellow men of us? How do we treat one another? Hmm. For this cause, 
that we should love one another to fulfill the law which tells us if we love one another, the law of love, if we love one another, then we don't commit adultery. Mm, we don't kill. We don't kill nobody we love. We don't commit adultery with people we love. We aren't going to bear false witness and tell lies on people we love. We don't covet things that people we love have. Any commandment, all of it can be summed up, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Ah, my, my, as thyself. Treat thy neighbor as you treat yourself. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Hmm. My, my, my. So, what are us the, the powers that be? Powers that be is an ordained, necessary entity for the good of mankind. We don't run all willy-nilly and do all kinds of whatever we want to do in mankind and just all the trouble and chaos that we would have. So God has ordained a place for government. And he has ordained that place for government not intended to be as some of them have turned out to be. Don't get me wrong, as some of them have turned out to be. Policemen and people who are in charge, we ought to respect them. And many times it's turned out to be that we're respecting someone who does not have our best interests at heart, as they should. If those who do is doing the will of God, of being the correct ministers of God, and we respect, we do, we respect those in charge over us. We give honor, trust to those who are in positions. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And we have a good conscience. We feel good about it. And we do as we should so that the respect is shown and they do not, do not uh, 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 reap terror on us, but yet on those who do not. If we do not, the sword that they have is for those who are doing criminal things, who are doing who are evil, who are, who are doing things against God's ordinance. Then how we're to act towards one another, love. Oh no man, nothing. The second part of this, of this, of this, of this, starting with the eighth verse, second part of this. Oh no man, nothing other than to love him. That's all. That's all. Because love encompasses all. Everything else comes under that. Love encompasses all. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. These are the laws of God, who has loved the one another fulfilleth the laws of God. So therefore, therefore, we must love one another. And it's summed up. It is all summed up and love your neighbor as yourself. Mm. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. My goodness, you'll find Galatians 5 and 14 says the same thing. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh, love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. That's in the 10th verse. In the 10th verse, love maketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. Praise the Lord. That is the fulfillment of the law. So therefore, in this life that we are living, we are children of God. If we are disciples of Christ, the, the fact that God has made provisions for us, it is his ordination. It is ordained by him that we have uh, uh, some order and rules and that we uh, in those orders and rules we are respectful and in the dealings with one another we are loving we don't always see that we see people who feel like they can do whatever it is they want to do and if you don't have love for one another, the love of God is not in you. You can't say you don't love your brother and say you love God. You can't love God and hate your brother. Therefore, 
uh, what what has to be in us is the love of God for order for us to love. We don't owe anybody anything, but love, that's all we need to have. That's all we need to have. Respect for those who are appointed over us and love for our fellow man. That is what we need to have. Lord have mercy. That's what we need to have. And you know, at this, at, at, at this stage, you, you can think about all of that that happened uh, last week. And all that they're finding out now, you see who the people, uh, uh, who the terror, uh -huh, that these rulers over us ought to come down on, ought to have the terror on, because those are the ones who do not have good works. Those are the ones who are resisting God's ordinances. Yes, those are the people who have no respect for what God has ordained. And you saw that last week ago, uh, Wednesday, one week ago, you saw where those who have no respect for the ordinance of God, who have no respect for the commandments of God, who does not have the love in their hearts, feel like they can offend others, feel like they can, can uh, abuse others, feel like they can torment others, and, and uh, that is not the love of God. But what we saw last Wednesday was a prime example of those who do not respect and honor the ordinance of God. They move on their own command. They move on their own command. And that is what we saw last Wednesday. Don't you think for one minute that that kind of behavior can be justified. There's no kind of way that you can justify bothering someone, uh, 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 not bothering someone, but, but coming to where the government is and going to do it your way and have it your way. Mm. In First Peter, the second chapter, First Peter, the second chapter, First Peter, second chapter, 13th verse says, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, in the 14th verse, or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, which is what we're talking about, and for the praise of them that do well. Mm. My goodness. The government itself whether it was kings back then, which it was, to governors, uh, uh, to presidents, whatever we have now, to the local government, is actually God's ordinance for us to live peaceable lives among one another. And you have people who take it their own way, going to do it their own way, going to have their own will and way, and then they are at that point, resisting the ordinance of God, don't love nobody. Huh? Don't love nobody. Don't love their fellow man. Certainly don't love their fellow man if they love themselves. That's for sure. Because they won't mind doing harm to you. People that don't mind doing harm to you don't love you as they love themselves. Maybe they don't even love themselves. I, I don't know. Uh, uh, nobody hate themselves, I don't guess, but 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 this is what we run into. People who want to to make their own rules and we have no business making our own rules. My, my, my. We might get beside ourselves sometime and, and, and maybe we got speeding laws in for what we say is the safety of us and we get the speed going down the highway and this thing, you know, we're going 75. We're supposed to be going 70. Oops, wait a minute. Oh, we're going 80. We're supposed to be going 70 and we get over and that means we need to come on back down. Yes, yes, yes. Come on back. We ought to obey the laws of the land and have love for our fellow man. Not to do it our own way, but the way God has ordained it to be. We say a lot of things that I know against people who are in government. We don't need this and we don't need that. And we don't like government at all. We don't like nobody telling us what to do. But God has ordained somebody telling us what to do. 
since he has ordained the act and very idea of telling us what to do and governing, which is which that's what it is, governing means that it fashions the way we are, it ought to be. God has ordained that, so we ought to respect it. And what you saw last Wednesday, there's no respect whatsoever. No respect whatsoever. Doesn't matter what political party you are in. Don't matter whether you're black, white, whatever green. That's not the way that we are supposed to behave towards our government. Mm. My, my, my. If you resist the power, you resist the wordness of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Ain't no other way to put it. All that you see, when you see people just going against the grain, grain on purpose. My goodness. They wasn't driving down the street and just got a little heavy foot on, on, on the gas and went a little faster than they supposed to go. Oh, no, 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 uh -uh. no, 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 no. It's not, these are deliberate acts. We have people with deliberate acts that resist. Every power but resist and won't be governed, will not be governed by the ministers God has placed. When we say ministers, that means they are the officials over the, 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 uh, uh, the official, they're in the official capacity of governing. Having the laws and things and statutes made and ordinances made for the good of mankind. Those are the ministers of that, and we ought to respect them. And we have people who are just going to go their own way. And you saw it last Wednesday, and my goodness, there ain't no better form. You saw it last Wednesday. You got a chance to see it. But I'm not going to say too much more about that. And I've been on here for a little while talking, talking, talking. I know you can't talk back. I understand that. We can't ask questions back and forth for right now. We are just in this format. But uh, in this 13th chapter of Romans, I just, I, we went over a, a few verses, just the first few verses, and they're self-explanatory, really. You don't, have to, you don't have to read them seven or eight times to get the understanding. They're pretty, uh, 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 don't be afraid of the government, the rules and regulations, because if you're not going to uh, disobey them, if you're not going to resist the orders of God, you don't have to, no reason to be afraid. You don't have no reason to worry about uh, 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 those, those uh, powers that be. But if you are one that's hell-bent on your own way, then you ought to be afraid because damnation is in your future. Damnation is what you are going to receive. Damnation is the reward. Oh, yes. Oh, that's the wages of your actions is damnation. That's what's going to happen. Damnation. Oh, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. What do we see in this country now? Where is the love? Oh, no man, anything but to love one another. Where is that? So that we fulfill the law. Where is that? You didn't see it last Wednesday. I'll tell you that right now. You, didn't see, you don't see it a lot of days. You don't see it from, from people who are doing some of the things that they do. If you want to see whether or not they have the love, if you want to see whether they respect and whether they honor the or the and they don't resist the ordinance of God, just look at people's behavior. And when you see what people do, even even officials, even officials, then you know who the good and evil are. And they don't need of us uh, 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 trying to sugarcoat it. We either good or we evil. Ain't no in between. There's good and evil. The good respect the ordinance of God, the evil do not. The evil resist. We live in the ordinance of God. We respect the ordinance of God, but evils do not. And there's a lot of that going on in the country. A lot of people fit that category. Do not be supporters of evil people. Evil people. All right, all right, all right, all right. My goodness. My goodness, that, that's enough. I, I ain't going to say uh, uh, much more about that, but uh, 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 what's going on now? Insurrection, all these kind of things that's going on now ought not be. 
And that's how we as children of God ought to look at it. I thought I'd talk just a little bit about it today in this 13th chapter. Don't be an insurrectionist. Don't be an insurrectionist and be a lover of mankind. Be a lover of your brothers. Be a lover of one another. Don't be an insurrectionist. Insurrection will get you damnation. But love fulfills the law. Be a good doer, a worker of good deeds. Avoid damnation. My goodness, my goodness. Until next time, avoid damnation. Praise the Lord. Lord, help us. Help us to be followers, O oh God, of those who are appointed over us, who are making for the good of all mankind, who are honest in, in their report, and who, who, oh God, are ministers of God for the good of mankind. Help us not to resist any good government. Help us, oh God, not to heap damnation upon us. We don't want to heap damnation upon us. Oh God, we just want to continue to be children of God, your children, disciples of Christ, who love one another and fulfill the law. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Until next time. Praise the Lord. Avoid damnation. Be workers of good. Love ye one another. And to sum it all up, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself.